Thank yeah. you all for, for joining us. Thank you, Rod, for participating. I'm Jeff Finn, CEO of Real Next, and we're delighted to have you joining us for the Real Next webinar series today uh, with Rod Santamassimo. Hey, Jeff, thanks for having me. I'm so sorry about this camera issue. No, Just not, no, I don't know what's going no on. No worries. Well, we, you know, the wisdom is in the, the voice and the, the words. And I know we'd, we'd love to look in and see your, your face. And if you can get that to work, that's great. But if not, uh, we'll, we'll just uh, forge ahead. Uh, so Rod has been an industry leading coach for what 15 years now, Rod. So congratulations on 15 years with Massimo Group. That's fantastic. And you've coached so many industry leaders and uh, have been prolific over the, the uh, 15 years as well with uh, your first book coming out, I guess, in 2011, Brokers Who Dominate, and now on your fourth book, uh, Dominators of Commercial Real Estate Brokerage, and uh, with a, a subhead of how top producers adopt and continue to be authorities in an otherwise commoditized industry. So uh, yeah, that's that's really quite a uh, a decade or so that, that uh, you've, you've uh, brought back to try to elevate the game of the commercial real estate professional and uh, you're, you're working with i would it looks like uh, talent across the spectrum from junior agents to the most senior agents in the industry and in reading your book where you highlight some of the the most proficient uh, brokers and practitioners currently and and some that are winding down and others that are building their careers or, or even moving into other areas of the industry uh, so maybe if you could you know, share some of the, the findings and what are some of the common threads of these brokers who dominate the dominators from 10 years ago and, the, and those that are still dominating today. And, and as you, you point out, in a, in a different type of environment the, that we're going into currently, how do they stay ahead of the game? Yeah, and Jeff, first and foremost, thank you for having me. Thank you to Realnex, fantastic platform. I remember I think about, uh, oh, you know, we've coached thousands of clients over 15 years, commercial real estate brokers, developers, mortgage brokers alike. Uh, I know Realnex is certainly uh, the preferred CRM from all the clients that we work with. So great, pro great platform, but thanks for having me. When I wrote the book, the first book, yep. Brokers of Dominate in 2011, and it came out in 2012, I guess. Um, you know, we were just starting out. The Mafia group was really just me. Uh, compared to today, we're having over 30 coaches. But recently, identifying those individuals and all the special young to old, and I was told by others that they, for a reason, dominate their marketplaces. And then I wrote the teens built to dominate both in 2016, looking just at teens. Then between everything that happened uh, and the pandemic specifically, you know, I had some downtime. I said, this would be a great time to see what people are doing. And so that book was two years in the making. And it really was a, just a retrospective, you know, look at what ever happened to those dominating brokers. Are they still dominating? Are they are they gaining your market share? And if so, what did they do for the last ten years? And yes, during the pandemic, to allow them to continue to grow. And the findings were, yeah, these folks are still dominating their marketplaces. Uh, take the oldest guy, Stephen Siegel, the chairman of Global Brokers for CBRE, who I think some could argue that's the biggest broker in the world. Um, you know, he's still very active today. Uh, and even some of the young brokers, a Bo Barron, a Brad Arm, a Chris Conos, they have all massively expanded their individual practices um, by doing specific things, which we'll talk about, uh, and helping them gain market share. What's what's fascinating, and when you you read the book, and I encourage everyone to the uh, to access the the the, you know, the original and and this uh, most recent one, but there are certain things that that the, these agents do that you wouldn't think they'd be doing, particularly at the level of success that they're having. So I mean, the the common threads and and, and the the ability to turn brokerage, which is so transactional, into a business, and to to migrate and to elevate the game, so you're not you're, you're not working yourself out of a job every day, but you're creating new jobs for yourself. And you've got this pipeline that just doesn't quit and you can consistently produce. And particularly as you go into a difficult cycle to be able to consistently produce is what sets, I think, these uh, people that you've profiled apart and what hopefully uh, some of our, uh, the audience members can, can gain from and, 
in um, in reading the book and some of the the comments that you'll be able to share today. Yeah, Jeff, you just nailed it. I mean, you just nailed one of the key uh, traits, for lack of a better term, uh, approaches, principles of these dominant brokers. And even young, even just starting out, I don't know where you all are in your in your practice, but if you can stop going after transactions and recognize you're the CEO of your own company, you're all independent contractors more than likely. If you just think I'm a business owner and build a business, the, 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 that will put you so far ahead of your competition. It will. And everyone in the book, everyone I write about, they built a business. It's never about the transaction. It's about the long-term perspective. Where is the business? How do I build a profitable business model? Looking at sales, marketing, finance, operations, HR, and that HR could be, uh, it could be as little as a, an outsourced admin uh, in the Philippines, right? Or someone like Bob Mackle who has a team of brokers and callers and admin and, and personal, to admit the personal admin, taking his personal stuff, the teams can be massive. But you got to build a business. That that is Jeff Nell. That is number one of the top three things we see for these dominant brokers. And one of the things that you you were just referring to, and whether it's admin or otherwise, where where do you get leverage? How do you exert the leverage so that you can elevate and move from a solid career and a solid production to massive, uh, you know, just top producer status, you know, multi million dollar a year type of uh, production. Yeah, leverage is a great word. You know, I, I, I'm a voracious reader. I've got three books on my, my desk right now. And I read this book, and I, and I always read books. If I get one sentence out of a 200-page book that made a difference, then it was worth, it was worth the time of reading. So I, I, wrote, I read this book called Hyper Sales Growth by Jack Daly, who's a sales coach. It was, a, it was a good book. Not great, but it was a good book. But he had one sentence in that book that resonated with me when I read it and changed my trajectory of my career. And I repeat it again and again and again. And if you write this down, I believe you and you look at it, you will change what you're doing. It's very simple. Here's a sentence. If you do not have an admin, you are one. If you do not have an admin, you are one. What that means said is- said it many times, and it continues to resonate. So yeah, what it means is, you're doing five in the Philippines dollars an hour, 10, 15, 20 dollar work an hour, where you should be producing at the minimum, right? At the minimum, a hundred dollars an hour. And in some cases, some of our brokers, you know, two thousand, five thousand dollars an hour. That's what you should produce. You can't get there when you're doing five dollar an hour work. It will never happen. So building a business, leverage. Now, first step, get an admin. After that, you start building out a scalable team. The, the other, I think, what, one of the words in your your subhead of your your book, which I always talk to agents about when I'm helping them, and partic particularly helping them to take advantage of a tool like Realnex, is to become a market authority. And you talk about how do you continue to be authorities in a commoditized industry. Can you talk a little bit about you know, the first of all, what what part of the industry is commoditized and what isn't? And how do you take advantage of the the you know the the easy part to access, which is commoditized, and make it special, make it your own, and and turn from a, a general practitioner into a market authority? Yeah. And unfortunately it's just it's in any industry. There'll be an average anything a bell curve right a standard deviation so given that if you think about the bell curve how we look at it probably 70 percent 75 percent of the brokerage market they're in a commoditized market they're they're chasing deals they're competing transaction after transaction they have no really value for lack of a better term but capable absolutely capable but not valuable but not a resource right they're not sought after so I think when you look at how you change the spectrum, and by the way, if you're new to business, I see it. I see it year after year after year. Um, we have, I won't mention his name, although he, he's out there uh, publicly, he'll tell, tell you. Uh, I see a kid on the West Coast 
which is said, I'm going to be the market authority in my in my tertiary tertiary of tertiary marketplace. And all he does is he studies the market trends, sales, and his and states, and he becomes encyclopedic knowledge. And because of that, he puts out content that people resonate with. And in a matter of two years, that kid went from selling a fourplex when I first met him, and yeah, he's a client of ours. And his most recent sales were 150 unit apartment complex, 196 unit apartment complex. The dude's making seven figures. He's That's fantastic. Seven figures. If you think, if you think seven figures, though, Jeff, your question was, he's an authority. He's an authority. And, you know, we all, and Jeff, I'm sure you know about, you know, Bob Mackler, correct, Jeff? Of course. Yeah. So we had the, the pleasure of interviewing Bob uh, a few months ago on the, the Mastermind series here. Oh, great. So, you know, and your audience may understand that Bob Mackle is the most decorated broker probably on the planet as far as awards and recognition. And he has sold more buildings than anybody else in, this, in New York. And it's history. Think about those two things in New York City. It's incredible. So what did Bob the kind of on ours? So what did Bob do during the pandemic? And this is the important lesson for your audience. Because right now in some of your audience's markets, things are slow. And I understand that. Velocity is down. Absolutely. So what did Bob do? And what did we, we you know, we strategized. What do we got to do now to help us in two years, three years? What's it going to be? Some brokers don't have that perspective, right? Businesses have plans, three-year plans, five-year plans. So what did Bob do? New York was shut down completely. So for the first time in the history of his, of his life in New York, he was able to drive street by street, block by block, and sit in the middle of Park Avenue and look at buildings and, and categorize them. And from that came this, and you can go on social media, he's everywhere now, Bob Mackle, K-N-A-K-L, uh, the Mac Room, the Mackle Mac Room. And he created a Mac Room of New York and every development site. And Bob right now, he's a listing machine. People are coming and saying, you are the expert. You, you do understand commercial real estate, development sites. You can do that in any market. Even if you're a tenant rep, you can do that. So there are all the leases and all the buildings, all the terms, what is happening. You can do that. It's not CoStar, understand? It's not CoStar. It's NeStar. It's my status. Yeah, that's the magic. Everyone has CoStar or Reonomy or whatever that baseline of information is. It's what do you know different about that property or more about that property or more about that trade than someone else did. And Bob told a particularly good story in the mastermind where uh, he said yeah, the, the records show that the building sold for a hundred million, but I know what it took to buy out the ten tenants that were holdouts to get the air rights that made it viable and to put the whole transaction together. So, you know, it may have started at hundred million, but it was far north of that when you got it all, when it was all said and done. It, 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 and no one else has, or few have that level of, of insight into the particular property and no one gets it from a third party that's a commodity. You have to live in the market, know the market. And, and I think define the market in a way that is easy enough to be managed. And, and 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 I think if you look at the history of Massey Knackle and how they went territory block by block and until you know ultimately they're they're covering you know a, a huge market. But um, what's a big enough market to oh, play? Yeah. Uh, what's what's your thought about that? I mean, I'm remiss not to share with you. You know what CRM Bob uses? Say that again. You know what CRM Bob uses? I know he uses. He's, he's, that's why he's still my friend. <laughs> Yes, the most decorated broker on the planet, who is not technically uh, savvy, he'll admit it, uh, but his team knows, they, they rely on RealNext to track all this information and create the call lists and create the plans to get the success he has. And I just, I, I got to share that because I, it's important, it's important to show that the best brokers in the world are using RealNext. I think mean, it's really important to share. But, but I don't want to share with Bug, but I, I, I have to share that. No, I, I appreciate it. But the, what, what we, I, you know, when I was running NAI or today at Realnex, found that too many people, when you ask them the question of what do you specialize in, uh, they'll say, I'm, I, uh, I have to be a generalist. And they're, they're busy chasing a deal here or chasing a deal there. 
and never becoming the authority because they're not owning that market. They're they're not taking the map like you just talked about and saying, I'm going to know everything about every owner and every building on this block. And so when you're dealing with a, a guy like you talked about on the West Coast, or I know you you coached uh, you know another friend of ours, Bo Berry in uh, in Florida, he, he needed to get in Gainesville. So from Gainesville, Florida to Manhattan, two totally different markets, but they're following the same principle. Bo's territory just needed to be bigger, and your guy on the West Coast, you know, the geography might have needed to be bigger. So well, to, let, let, let me take away from Bo. Bo's a great guy in the office. He's written in the book. Bo, 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 Bo. Take a guy like and you know him. Um, Bo Bear, Bo Bear, okay, different Bo, but Bo Bear. Yep. He was he was a young gun when I wrote the book in 2012. He was up and coming. The dude lives now, folks. I don't know if you can find it on a map, but he lives in a town <laughs> called Owensboro, Kentucky. Okay, good luck finding that on a map. Just good luck. Tertiary of tertiary markets. Bo's exploded, absolutely exploded in the last 12 years. Um, what he's doing is phenomenal. He has created a a uh, boutique, yeah, leveraging his family's firm, but still he's 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 plus distant exponentially. But he focuses on really two products, one being self-storage and and other. He doesn't say I'm a generalist and I can help you in anything you need in Owensboro, Kentucky. He says, This is what I do, this is what I'm great at, and I can help you throughout Kentucky and now beyond based on what he's doing. So it's an, I'm sorry, but it's an excuse to say I have to be a generalist. I get it. If you're a tertiary, tertiary, tertiary market, you don't, you can't do everything, but you can focus on the two or three highest velocity things and be an expert at that. Exactly. And and then what what happens when you are the best brain surgeon? When somebody needs brain surgery, they're coming to you. When you are the self storage guy or the multifamily guy, or the development site guy, or the church person, or the, uh, you know, what uh, life sciences lady, the, the, the specialization and the branding that you can get from that. And you talked a little bit about it with the social media and the, and the other uh, ways that, that, that Bob is doing it. But all of a sudden, you, if you become the authority, you need to let the world know that you're the, that authority and the business flocks to you yeah and that's right, what right. I, one of the common right. traits in, in your book i mean you, you could really see it time after time that these people were just known for something and that's the key look it, it's it's great to have be really good at something and I'm, I'm you know I, I i've been coached by every every possible guru you know i have invested in your program i, I look you can't be a coach and not get coached that's just hypocritical so um i know this guy might be controversial but what grant cardone would say is if they don't know you, they can't flow you. And so all these dominators have really intense, purposeful presence campaigns. Bo Barron just started a really, uh, I find, unique podcast with his brother, Tinny, who's a comedian. It's fantastic. And they, they're talking, they're talking about commercial real estate. It, it's a podcast you, that's the point. Bob Mackle's in every freaking paper. I mean, everyone in this book has a presence element to go with the prospecting element. So you're right, Jeff. If they don't know you, they can't fool you. So the um, you, we introduced you as, and you you are known now as the leading commercial real estate coach. What is coaching? What does someone get from a coaching experience? It's it different than training, because obviously you need to know the fundamentals. But how do you you sort of help these people elevate their game? And to if they're a, a 250,000 producer to become a 500, 500 to become a million, a million to become three, whatever whatever it is, what's the you know, what is the role of the coach and why is it so important? Well, first of all, thank you very much. I'm humbled what you said, and I, and I wouldn't say I'm in, look, I'm a, I'm a really good coach. I am, I am, I am but the Mosmo Group is an organization of 30 plus coaches. I think the Mosmo Group is the best coaching find. Uh, of course, it's coaching program in, in the industry on the planet. I, I believe that's my core. But to get someone to double their income, triple their income, we have folks 20x their income. It's incredible. But to get them to do that, you, you need a couple of things. Number one, you need to understand that we're not training. Training is information. And, and that's all it is. Training is nothing more than here's the information. Good luck. So I've never wanted to be a training company, ever. Um, 
but we coach. Coaching is implementation. Therefore, for the implementation is the accountability to say, this is what we need to do. You go do that. Report to me how it's going. Let's fix it. I'm going to hold you accountable to metrics. Yes, activities. It might be calls. It might be conversations. It might be letters. It might be marketing pieces. It's probably a combination of both. We're going to hold you accountable. Just like our personal trainer in the gym would say, give me 20 push-ups. Let's see you do it. So that's coaching. It's, the, it's the taking the methodologies. We call them the Mossimo method. I've had a prospect, had a great presence, had a few presentations. Jeff, it probably doesn't shock you, but at Mossimo Group, I have seen every presentation from, I would pretty much guarantee you 95% of the broker firms in the United States, because they're our clients. And so I see them, and they're all the same. They're all the same. So how do we present against that? It's kind of easy, actually. How do you present? So we do everything, the whole gamut of your business, not your transaction, your business, and we give you metrics, and we hold you accountable, and then once we know you're doing the work, my last book for the Rick is knowing that you're doing, but I don't care what you know, I care what you do. And we, we can't move you forward until you show me you're doing it. You can't move forward. So what it takes is that application, but more so, more so, it takes the individual who says, you know what? In regards to where I am, I know I can get better. In Bob Knackle, when I met him, he didn't mind sharing this. I met Bob Knackle, the dude is, dude is grossing $6 million a year. That's more than most firms in the United States. He was grossing six million a year. Now, within three years, we've gotten to 18 million a year. Just amazing. Why? Same principle, Jeff. Every broker, if you're the best broker in the world, you're just starting out. It's a fact. Every broker is leaving money on the table. Every broker is losing commissions every year by not doing certain things consistently and right and right way as well. So it's the implementation and the identification of those items. For Bob, I knew three things right away you could do. I figured it out and it worked. And for other clients, do assessments and practice and monitoring. We can see what they should be doing and they grow. But you've got to have the desire to grow. You've got to have the intellectual curiosity to know that we don't know what we don't know. And that combination of curiosity and implementation creates transformation. Is it a standard playbook? I mean, is it is there a cookie? cutter that you could put someone into and say, here's how you are successful, or do you need to create a playbook for each person? When you look at like all the people that you've interviewed, all the people that you've coached, uh, how do you understand how to get that person to um, do the work? And yeah, you know, talking about, it's, it's all about doing, because it's easy to, easy to think about it and understand it, but to actually execute it and uh, hit the yeah, objectives. Great, great, great question. So it, it's a combination of two things. First of all, we'll do a personality, natural behavior assessment um, with all our one-on-one -on -one clients. Not a group client, just not proper, it's open to do so, but all our one-on-one -on -one clients, we, we do natural behavior assessment. So we know how someone's wired, where we can push, where we can pull, because you can't treat everyone the same. Every player on every team is different. And every coach knows that. Every coach knows that. You can't yell, look, when I when I played lacrosse in college, if my coach would yell at me and scream at me, I would chill like a freak. <laughs> I would, I admit it. I didn't want that, right? I wanted to say, hey, Rod, not the greatest play right there. Let's try this instead. Okay, coach, I'll do it, right? Every player is different. Everyone. Uh, I hope it's getting a little tougher now. But every player is different, Jeff. So there's just a natural behavior you got to learn. And then beyond that, yeah, there's a playbook. There's a way Bill Walsh, Walsh, would coach Joe Montana to run a certain play. And there's a way Bill Walsh would coach Steve Young to run a certain play. But there are plays. So yes, there's a playbook. And that playbook is the same thing if you were Mark Zuckerberg or Jeff Bezos or Joe Broker or Jane Broker, right? You have five things you got to do. You got to sell, there's a playbook for that. You got to market, there's a playbook for that. You got to run your finances, there's a playbook for that. You got to run your operations. The processes is a playbook for that. And then you got to run a team is a playbook for that. Even a team is just yourself is a playbook for that. Sales, marketing, operations, finance, and uh, human resources. Every company has those divisions. Everyone has a playbook. That's what we're running. When you look at the 
the um, the profile of the industry does, and I, I, maybe it's self-serving. It, you're from your context, but does everybody need a coach, and it, or can you can you self-manage? Can you in, in bring this in if you know the metrics? It, it's, I think there, with some people, they don't know what great is. They they don't know what good is. They don't even know what enough is. They know they want to make a certain amount of money, but don't know what sort of the performance benchmarks along the way to get there. If they just knew what they needed, can you can you manage yourself to get there? Or do you think in all cases, a, uh, you're going to be better served to have somebody by your side? First of all, I believe everyone, and not just a business coach, life coach, whatever coach, everyone needs a coach because everyone, everyone, you and me, Jeff, especially, right? Everyone is ignorant. We are, we don't know what we don't know. I don't know what I don't know. And that's a fact. I, I don't, no one knows. We're all ignorant. That's okay. Don't be arrogant. If you're arrogant, you're saying, I'm good, I'm fine, I don't need that. Then, then just, if you're not coachable, get comfortable. And Jeff, I will tell you, we have started coaching some of the most prolific brokers and some of the most, for lack of a better term, popular brokers on social media than, than anyone else. And it didn't work. It just didn't work. They were set in their ways and that's the way they want to be. So our, our response is, let's not continue. Let's just, you know, if, if you're good and you're fine and you're saying you don't need that, then we, we can help because we can't, we can't. So. While I do believe there are certain very, very successful brokers who don't get coached, here's a fact. This is a fact. And Jeff, I don't know if you listen to um, Alex Hermosi. Are you familiar with Hermosi? No. Okay. He's the most prolific entrepreneurial podcast and thought leader right now. He's blowing up. But he, 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 he shared one thing, which is true. If you're making $20,000 and you really want to make let's just suggest $500,000, but you don't know how. That means every year, you, it's costing you $300,000 every year because you don't know how. That's what it's costing you. And people say, Rod, you your coaching is, is, is a high investment. I say, no, the coaching is minimal. The cost to you is exponential. Is that, that lost opportunity. You lost can't get that back. So it really comes, it, it sounds like it, it's all about desire versus complacency. So, or comfort, as you say, if the person, if you're somebody's comfortable at, at 200, coaching's not going to help. No, if they're, no, if, you're, if, you're, if, you're, if you're comfortable and you say words like, I'm fine, I'm good, that's, first of all, I would say that's freaking awesome. That's awesome that you're in a position in your life, you're like, I'm good. I mean, to me, Jeff, it's just the way I'm wired. I'm never good. I'm always thinking right. about like, more, always need more. And, and that, it's not the money thing. Don't get me wrong. I mean, yeah. you and I, you know, have been very fortunate making a lot of money. It's not the money thing. It's just the, the desire to get bigger. So if you don't have that, then coaching, you should never get coached because it's not going to work. It's just not. Like Jeff, our cardinal rule is at Mossimo, we used to, early on, a broker would come to us and say, hey, I want you to coach my guys, right? Guys and, and ladies, excuse me. Um, we say, okay, um, are they going to invest themselves? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm going to pay for that. And so we tried it the first time and it failed miserably. It just did. So we do not coach anyone who doesn't have skin in the game. We do refuse to because it doesn't work. You have to be able to invest in yourself and be committed to the process of change for a won't work. You know, it's, it's amazing. You, you, you... You talk about your lacrosse experience. I uh, I swim and play tennis. I, you, the things that I do, I I know when if I'm swimming, if I'm swimming and somebody's swimming faster than I am, I'm gonna swim a little faster. If you right. swim by yeah. yourself, you, you're not you're not gonna push yourself to that limit. If you're if whatever type of conditioning, if you and you think about it so often just in sports, but you know, whatever it is that you do as a person, somebody watching you is going to see things that you're doing right things things that you're doing wrong and give you that little extra motivation to do it that much more to take that 
extra lap to take that extra you know sprint or whatever you're you're doing to to uh, realize the top performance you know jeff if you own a broker term i can double your income i can double your income here, and, and i'll tell you exactly what you do isn't that ready if you want a broker term what you do is every week you put a leaderboard up on your um that everyone can see in front of everyone everyone's name everyone's name it's just gonna happen your people are gonna start working hard they're gonna be embarrassed or they're gonna drop out you don't need them anyway I'm sorry you don't right but number two is not gonna be happy she's gonna be one to be number one number five he's gonna be number four this is what human nature mm -hmm. so but broker firms won't do that they won't do it because maybe it's not clearly correct or no one's business i think it's crazy i think you should put everyone well, it's a cultural thing and you, oh, it's going to attract people that want to be in that competitive environment and want to be on the top and it'll weed out those that don't fit and which are likely what those that aren't uh, like or aren't going to be your top producers over time because they just don't have that that passion no no they don't so, so tell us about the maybe the, the that's what i would do <laughs> yeah so within the the book what are some of the, the key takeaways what what you know when you look across the, the and not just in the book but the many people that you've coached you know if you think about the the you know three or four things that all of our listeners should be thinking about what are the the things that they should be measuring themselves against what is excellent if you think of benchmarks and any of the the activities and, and performance metrics that you have and um and how do you, you measure yourself to know where you're at and what you need to do to, to get to that level of performance? Um, yeah, and and I, again, I, it's not just the end result. It's these steps along the way that you have to do to get to the end result. Yeah, I, I agree. And um, a shameless plug here. I looked today on the internet just to see how dominators of commercial real estate brokerage and book is doing. Um, and it's, like it's number three in real estate. You understand, number three in real estate is a commercial real estate book. It's a big deal because all the books are residential books. So I was like, okay, that's cool. But to my shock and surprise, it broke the top 20 of all sales books in the US, which is just remarkable. That's so, fantastic. Congratulations. Um, so again, dominators of commercial estate brokers, if you're listening, if you want to grab a copy, please. Uh, but here's here's the three things, four things. Let's talk about the book first. Number one, you said it, Jeff, you nailed it. They all recognize their business owners and they're going to build a business not chase transactions it's not a definite number one number two most of the people in this book now many of them are clients many were not most people in this book even those that weren't clients of ours get coached they just recognize they need some something to move them and drive them getting better and that's a remarkable thing the other thing is they're all long-term perspectives that's that's correlation with the business owner but they don't look at things as I need to fill my pipeline with a transaction this month to pay my bills. They're beyond that now, obviously. But it's where's the market going? Where's it headed? The, if you, I got a chapter in the book, Matt McGregor, one of the most prolific industrial brokers in, in, the, in the United States, he's always thinking we're going to be in 12 months. That's, that's on his whiteboard. 12 months from now, this is going to be happening. So, for example, when the pandemic hit, he already got his master's in logistics. He used to bring out and helping all his clients with the supply chain issues. He was the guy. So something like that. Mark uh, Mark Myers up in Chicago. He does he does uh, senior housing. And then okay, he said, okay, how can I help in the long term? He started finding vendors across the world that offer PPE, you know, personal protection equipment, and got them to his clients. They bought beyond the transaction, beyond the business. What they thought about, and this is the key, it wasn't real estate, it was real life. And that made a huge difference for them. Um, and, and finally, one thing I found really surprising when I, when I saw the, when I revisited the book, most of the people in the book, not all, but most of the people in the book, they put their money where their mouth is and they invest in commercial real estate. Now, some won't, some won't, they think it's a conflict, that's completely up to you. Um, but I think if you if you're telling your clients and advise them to buy or lease commercial real estate and you don't own commercial real estate, are you really committed to the, 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 the industry? Commercial real estate remains the best investment after coaching that you can make. So, <laughs> and there, there's some that actually were migrated out of brokerage, like Bob Bremer, they, our friend that the uh, that 
you know, I want to do development. I, I have a few clients that I'll continue to serve, but primarily what I want to do is move into uh, ownership and uh, taking care of it and, and building Tim a portfolio. Strange, Tim Strange did the same thing, and Bob Barron did the same thing, and Chris Carter did the same thing, and Brad Hans, who was a young broker, industrial broker 12 years ago, now he's running these mega investment developments across the West Coast. Yeah, they all adapt and recognize that commercial real estate took creating passive income. This is going to be bigger and bigger, Jeff, as the years go on, especially with AI. Um, passive income generation and fee-based, not commission-based, but fee-based generation from a brokerage advisory uh, perspective become more and more prominent. And that's how brokers will make a lot of their money going forward. Yeah, I think if you're advising younger practitioners today and you're thinking about, you know, where do you want to be, you know, 10, 20 years in the, you know, down the road, it's, you should be migrating into some level of, of ownership and building some type of portfolio, whether you do it for yourself or you're raising money and bringing people together because you're seeing so many opportunities and it, it, it can be done right so it's not conflicting with your clients, but you're actually bringing your clients together into opportunities and presenting them in a way that you're helping to package for them. So taking actually an extra step and providing an additional level of service, yeah. which is a, you know, a way to leverage your market knowledge, your market authority, your position, your relationships, not just build a transactional income of, to build build wealth. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's look, not in progress that consistent pipelines, but consistent pipelines still remain being paid deal by deal. It's just what it is. It's just the nature of the beast. So yes, passive income generation and consulting advisory generation, all the gurus that I read and follow um, all say the same thing. Brokerage commissions will continue to evaporate as more and more business models are applied to the industry. Just what it is. So we are in a, an interesting time where you know, the, you, the environment uh, is uh, is pressured the way you're talking about it from commissions just broadly uh, being pressurized. More people are needed on a team to actually execute because there, there's more expectations. And now the the market's shrunk. There's a, a you know, fewer transactions out there than there there have been. And we're gonna go through a cycle. There's a massive wave of restructuring and, and other uh, pressures that are gonna you know, get us to the other side of this. But how do people adapt today? What would be your recommendations for, given the current environment, the all of these things? And not let's not go to AI yet, but I wanna ask you about that, but let's well, just I'll think about the... <laughs> I'll give you a second on that. Let's just think about the 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 changing dynamics of the transactional market today, and uh, how if can you do anything today if you haven't positioned yourself already? I guess it, it maybe it's too late for you, but what do you do to prepare yeah, for the next? Because so many people never went through a cycle. I mean, there are people we've been in a ten-year boom, and here we are. Yeah, it's not too late. Uh, I, we just did a client stack analysis um, for for not for us, but for brokers. Their client stack analysis. With this afternoon with my chief strategy officer, Mike Gallegos. And we, we recognize what you should be doing right now is you should be having conversations with everyone you ever wanted to work with today or three years from now. These, right now, there's a lot of uh, pencil and paper going on, which means people aren't transacting. Instead, they're waiting. That, that, that's the nature of the beast. It's what it is. But they're still having conversations. So unfortunately, it's not a quick fix. But you have to have conversations with those you want to work with, with those you don't want to get known by today. And that, look, I'm not calling to transact. I'm simply calling to see what are you thinking right now? What are your plans? What, where are you? And the last question always is, always is, and how can I help? And they say, you know, I'm looking for comps on these things. We'll go, I'll get into it. No problem. You got you to take a step back and think you're going to get a lot of fees right now. And if you want fees, don't worry about it. Don't start calling all the banks. And all the processors because it's happening, it's happening already. You can, you can read it every day and start working with your banks to, to be their facilitator of what's going to happen in the next six to eight months. It's happening already. Um, that's the quick fix. But Jeff, we got to run AI. We have to run AI. 
So let's go there. And, and by the way, uh, for the audience, questions uh, are welcome. Come in with them, and we will do our best to uh, uh, see Rod's view and uh, share perspectives. So let the questions come in. But the uh, we're early days in in AI, just beginning, and and so many people are using it in so many different ways. Are experimenting, learning about it, trying to figure out what what does this mega trend do to transform how the brokerage industry is executed in the, in the years to come. Yeah, you know, you're right. If right now we're on iPhone 1, and we are in, in, in AI, but Jeff, seven months ago, there was no AI. There was no such thing as AI seven months ago. It wasn't. And all of a sudden now, it's everywhere. It proliferated everything we do. We, we have absolutely, I, when I got a call in January from a, my, my, my mentor, which was 27 years old, I'm saying I'm 60, He's my tech mentor. He said, Rod, I want you to watch this thing called ChatGPT. Just give me five minutes. I'm like, whatever, I don't know. And Jeff, within five minutes, I knew the world had changed. Yep, in fact, yep. I, I, I called up, I called the senior manager meeting. Mossman said, everything's, everything's going to change, and we're going to be the leaders and figure it out. And so we're changing everything at Mossman, everything based on AI. Because what AI can do is it, it's the great accelerant. Whether you like it or not, whether it can replace jobs, whatever you think, it's here. Sorry, you better adopt or you're going to be left behind. Just as, that's a fact. So we're pulling our clients into AI. We're assisting them using and leveraging the AI tool. But Jeff, this is where we are today. And this is what's the great opportunity for building. Right now, today, because I'm, I'm building it and I'm seeing it, you can walk into a client, and let's, let's, I don't care if it's a lease or a sale, it doesn't matter. Let's call it a sale and make it clean. Right now, if you want to go up to your listing, you would go up to the listing, you would pitch your deal, you make it the listing, then you do your marketing materials, and then you go out to the market and you distribute the information and you collect the information back and you get the qualified leads. And, and three weeks to four weeks or longer, you tell the client, this is the market, this is where you are, this is the opportunity. And that's today. But it isn't. Today, this is what you can do. You can have all your marketing materials for that asset because I've done it. I've gone to LoopNet, and I'm not a broker. I've gone to LoopNet, I grabbed the property, I created all the marketing materials for that property, right? Take that to uh, other tools. I won't get too deep into this. You can do a pre market screening and take your list and let them know this opportunity is about to become available even before you have the listing because you don't have it yet. Get feedback from the market in three days, not three weeks, by doing some automated processes using AI. And in those automated processes, after you get the listen, you go to the owner and say, look, I've already looked at the market, here's the initial feedback. And the owner's like, wait a minute, you know already? Yeah, I know. You get this, this, and this, here's the pricing range. Tell you what, give me a 30-day listing. Your competition's asking for six months. Give me a 30-day listing. By the way, I'm not going to charge you 4% or 5%. What do you all charge? 6%. I'm going to charge you 8%, 10%. Why do I pay a higher fee? Because time is money. Interest rates are going up. I'm going to give you an answer in three days versus two or three months. And so the additional fee is nothing compared to what money you'll make or lose by not doing this. And they're going to agree. And then what's going to happen is you're going to create a campaign that follows it. You will launch a campaign that day that very day, the thousands of investors with not only email, text, voicemail drops, but more and so today is out there, personalized videos of you talking to each investor by their name, videos of you saying, hey Jeff, hey Mac, hey Cindy, right? And talking about the deal and personalized voicemail drops, hey Jeff, hey Mac, hey Cindy, and that, and then you get an automated active campaign, which you will figure out interest in a matter of two to three days. It all can happen today. Everything I just shared with you is available today. Does it take money? Yeah. It's time to construct it. We're doing it right now. We think listings and exclusives will no longer be month-long processes, but a matter of hours or days, because AI allows you to do that. And you may be shaking your head and saying, no way. And I'm telling you, it's available today. 
Correct. It's all about the, the efficiency and the liquidity in the market. But so it, it, what hasn't happened yet, and I, I see this coming too, is all of the due diligence documentation and the data that is needed to profile a property is accessible. It's just not organized. And if you, you bring it together and you sort of have that the uh, prospectus of the building done, then you can trade the building because with with AI, as you're, you're suggesting, all the known buyers, that information is out there too. Who are the best ones? Who's the most active? Who's got the most the best money? All that information is out there based on what what they're they're doing, and you just can't see it all because it's been been opaque, and it's just been too much. And now the ability to organize that, Jeff, assimilate you, it, and, you, and make it actionable. Jeff, say it again. Have you tried the code interpreter on ChatGPT four? I have not tried the code interpreter. I've used it uh, for for many other things, but not not for okay. not for they that. Released this, they released this last week, and I and I tested it, and I was shocked. I uploaded. Uh, I, I would never. By the way, I would never upload public records into ChatGPT or client records. I would never do that for the public information. Neither should you. You all can create your own private portal with API codes really cheaply. You can have your own private ChatGPT portal so no one sees your stuff. That's really important to share, okay? Don't upload client information on the public forum. That's a confidentiality. Good, good share. advice. So I took old data from a real estate sales in New York from 2016 and 17, you can get it on the internet, and I uploaded it, which you can now do in, with Code Interpreter. I uploaded the file, I had to analyze the most frequent buyers and sellers, I identified the five most likely buyers for an asset, and then I had ChatGPT create an Excel sheet for me with a series of information I wanted. It took my information and it gave me a download link to download the, the Excel format of file all within 10 seconds. It was incredible. So that's how quickly the markets changed. That's it. That's right? really amazing. And it, we, one of the things that we're doing in, in Real Next now is we, we've created a uh, what we're calling Navigator Pro, which comes with RX data. So it's a data set that has all of the the transactions in the market, all the base building and, and land information, lender information, loan profile. So we can see loan maturities, interest rates, be able to see that against the, the market, be able to not just understand what people are saying they want to buy, but see what they actually have purchased and what they've sold. So you begin to really profile our clients get to profile their buyers and sellers most effectively. And it can be predictive in who's likely to sell based on an asset type, the type of uh, investor they are, and you know, what the, the typical hold period is measured against what the loan profile is in the market that they're in. And all of a sudden you can see that, you know, here are the the 10% of the properties that I work on that are most likely to transact in, in 2023, 24, whatever. And I can spend my time with those sellers and then find just the right buyer rather than sort of cultivate my, my market generically uh, without the level of intelligence that is now available. And as you're talking about it becoming increasingly available and, and uh, increasingly competitive in how you need to service your clients. So I think the, the, the real estate industry has long been talked about being slow to adopt technology and it, it has been i think the technology has been slow to to come to the real estate industry that actually helps them transact more efficiently and we're, we're pushing it but these other other tools out there are just making what we have and what the industry is able to access much more accessible that's it that's been, really it's a fantastic platform so i'm not surprised but man, what, what, a, what an accelerant for your users to get get the information get it out to the market Fantastic. So what's next? I, we have uh, just a few more minutes. I uh, just want to make sure that uh, if I didn't uh, get to cover something that you wanted to to be sure you you shared, let's take take a few minutes uh, to just. Yeah. I, I think up. right now we're, we're look. Um, first of all, I, I read so I read real estate newsletters every month, right? And I and I also read business newsletters every month. So I'm always reading I go outside real estate. I think your audience needs to go outside real estate to buy just real estate, but you should be reading real estate stuff. For example, I, I love the um, the new new newsletter by the CRE Daily. I, I love that newsletter because it's it's clean, unopinioned information. That's what I love. Um, but sometimes the information is very negative. Watching the news, you think the world's over based on what's going on in the world. 
I think that I, I have a friend, an author, Anthony Reno, who creates an amazing sales book. The new book coming out in October is called uh, The Negativity Fast. I think we all need to go to negativity fast. We need to get away from the negative and realize, Jeff, I see every day, every Monday, I have a call with our, our, our top clients. I do. And I say, tell me what's happening. And they, they, these, are, these are not 10 clients, these are 50, 60 clients. Uh, and tell me what's happening. And every week they only tell me all the deals are doing. Every week, I'm like, wait a minute, you read the news. There's nothing going on. That's not the case. You have clients in every market in the United States. You have clients in tertiary, secondary, primary market. Sure, Jeff, your office clients who aren't doing AI tenants in San Francisco are having a hard time. I understand that. New York clients who are doing multifamily hotels in New York, retail, office, are having a hard time. That makes total sense. But it's the 99% of the rest of the market that is doing really well. I think that's people need to realize things are happening in commercial real estate brokerage today. That that is the thing I leave behind. Yeah, I think it is an interesting human trait, I guess, to, to focus on the negative. So a lot of people talking about the the problems, but the the, the 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 problems really are the opportunities in the market. So we are an industry of problem solvers. So when the 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 some of the owners have problems, uh, you know, they've got debt issues and debt structure. But that's where talented people like we have on on the call come in. How do you help them repackage, reposition their their asset? How do we get them to the other side of the cycle so they're they're not underwater or get interest rates down to to be able to cover? And it's work and advice, and the, these clients need our services more than ever. And uh, it should be an exciting time, and in one that uh, the 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 group here and and our clients, our mutual clients, are 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 excited about because it it it's showing it's going to show who the best and where the best value is coming from, and how they can help their clients identify opportunities, whether it's on the buy side or reposition their, their properties if they need to, to work through the, the cycle to get to the point where they can recapitalize them and and uh, get to uh, another growth growth cycle. Yeah, and, and I'm not being, I believe you, I'm not being disrespectful, I say this, but the last several years, selling an asset at record high prices, that wasn't hard. <laughs> it just wasn't. I'm sorry, yeah. it wasn't. Interest rates were not, there were no interest rates, and there was heavy demand, a lot of cash. Okay, great job. But that's the easy one. This is what hard feels like. Today is what hard feels like. And that's why this is never supposed to be an easy industry, commercial real estate brokerage. This is what hard feels like. Yeah, and not helping someone sell at a record price, and helping someone who's about to go default on their note, either refinance or find a buyer, sell at a price they never expected to sell at because now it's way too low compared to last year. That is the job we got now. And that's the job of the true market authority. Commodities can sell at record price, but farms are what's needed today. And that's what you get paid for. I mean, the hard work. That's what you should get paid for, not to, just to get in the way of a deal. Because you, you, you know, to get when you know, three years ago, if you got the listing, you sold the property. Now it's it's real work to get it structured properly and get the right um, the right people together. So it. Uh, yeah, this has been fantastic. I apologize now, my camera. I don't know. I, I, it worked. It worked ten seconds or ten minutes ago when I was on a. A Teams call and a Slack call and a Zoom call. I know that, so I apologize for that. We saw, we're, we're sorry we didn't get to, to see your, your smiling face, but we heard your energy and enthusiasm. Thrilled about the success of the book. Uh, it looks like it'll be another bestseller like uh, your, your original was. So, Rod, thanks for, for sharing your wisdom views. The, the book is available for anyone that's uh, out there just to uh, go to Amazon and, and get it and take advantage of the the findings and the experience of some of the real pioneers in the industry from the Steve Siegel, Bob Knackle, Jerry Anderson, uh, and, and others that are you know, just slugging it out in, in the market just as uh, most of the, the audience is. So uh, it's, a, it's a great, uh, great piece that uh, is sure to help the, the, uh, those that aren't at that level yet get to that level of, of performance. And uh, we'd love to, you find that uh, real next is one of the common traits of, of many of those people in the book. So if you're interested in, in great technology to help you elevate your your business to become that market authority, understand how 
you can use a systematic approach to business development, uh, prospecting and deal management. We've got a great solution for you as well and appreciate your kind words earlier, Rod. And uh, again, congratulations on 15 years of success in, with Massimo Group and the, the new book. And thanks everyone for, for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the session. Thanks, Rod. I appreciate you, Jeff. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.